everyone, don't forget to follow me on these social media platforms to stay up to date with video content along with interacting with me directly on all your favorite topics and discussions via Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Thank you, and let's begin. What is going on, Dragon Ball fans? Welcome back to another episode of this week's Dragon Ball Q&A video, where today we have lots of awesome questions to go through, courtesy of your questions having to be posted down below. And before I begin, I do want to let you guys know that each individual question posted onto this video is going to be directly reflected onto you guys, as I would like to know your answers as to each question posted down in the comment section below. And of course, if you guys have any questions to ask me of your own, it pertains to Dragon Ball, make sure to go on ahead and drop your questions questions down in the comment section below and again if you guys are new to this channel don't forget to go on ahead and punch that subscribe button and enable all notifications that way you guys can be notified whenever a Dragon Ball video is posted onto this channel in conjunction to news information updates and discussions hashtag notification squad and the final plug for this video in case you guys are not subscribed to my second and third channels you guys can go on ahead and find the links to those down in the description box for Unreal Network and for Unreal Vlogs for behind the scenes footage and tons of awesome content on there that you will not get to find on here. So without wasting any more time, let's go on ahead and begin with our very first question of the day, which is from none other than Lauren. Hey Unreal, just wanted to wish you a happy new year and thank you for all of the content you've given us this year and being on top of your game. I watched your spoiler videos recently and I was curious to get your thoughts on the following question. One, why do you think Vegeta isn't given Super Saiyan God in the tournament? Good question. Do you think it would have made any difference in the way he battled characters? Question two, do you think Gohan is going to eliminate Topo? or Topo is going to eliminate Gohan. I think Gohan will be wrung out. Question three, how do you feel about Vegeta losing to Jiren but still being in the tournament? I think a lot of people are misunderstanding as to why he's currently in the ring. So how do you feel about this? Is Vegeta being saved? And the final question, question number four, when do you think Frieza will go golden against Dispo? Have a great new year, Unreal. Also, will you be posting more stuff on your vlogging channel? I really enjoy that one a lot. Thank you so much, Lauren. Actually, I do have a lot of content planned for my vlogging channel in which I will do pranks and skits and reactions and discussions and all types of different things, fan mail Q&A videos and all kinds of different videos on there. So I'm going to keep you guys updated with that. But to answer your first question, why isn't Vegeta given Super Saiyan God? Vegeta should have gotten Super Saiyan God way back ever since, I believe, the battle with Goku Black because that was heavily featured in the Dragon Ball manga adaptation as Vegeta fought Black as a Super Saiyan God and, and you know, vice versa with Goku. So I, I just feel like Super Saiyan God would have been a great addition in seeing Vegeta finally achieve that in the tournament. Now, I understand some people are going to say, well, it's not really going to make that much of a difference. I think it would. I think it would best suit the narrative in seeing Vegeta fight as a Super Saiyan God, more so than Super Saiyan 2. But during this entire tournament, we've gotten Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta, Super Saiyan Vegeta, and that was basically it. As opposed to Goku, Goku's been jumping through legit every single level that he has, from Super Saiyan 1 to Super Saiyan 2 to Super Saiyan 3 to Super Saiyan God to Super Saiyan Blue to Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken, Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken times 10 and even Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken times 20. So Goku was able to jump into all of these forms so casually and essentially put up almost like the same fight with each form given. And I feel like if Vegeta has Super Saiyan God, which I do believe he does have the transformation ability but chooses not to do it, I think that if Vegeta had Super Saiyan God in the tournament, number one, it would have been visually pleasing. I mean, just imagine seeing a red-haired Vegeta in the ring just stomping out a bunch of other characters, you know? That would have been great to see. I would have personally enjoyed, you know, witnessing Super Saiyan God Vegeta versus perhaps Kale, Kalifla, Super Saiyan God Vegeta having to fight other characters, you know, even even having to fight Ani Raza, because we saw God Goku fight Ani Raza as a Super Saiyan God, so imagine if that worked, you know, in Vegeta's favor, as he also had Super Saiyan God, so I think it would have made a difference, and visually, it would have been very pleasing to see Vegeta battle as a Super Saiyan God, but I think that the reason why he's not given Super Saiyan God in the anime is because it's not really needed, I mean, we have Ultra Instinct Goku, Goku pretty much has all the other forms, packed down. I'm just assuming that the writers and the producers over at Toei didn't really have any need to have Vegeta become a Super Saiyan God, even though it would have sold toys, it would have sold merchandise. You guys can't deny that if you saw a Super Saiyan God Vegeta in the tournament with all of his glory, that you wouldn't purchase any sort of piece of merchandise like shirts and action figures and DLC, because you already know if they were to drop that God Vegeta merch, you guys would buy it. So personally for me, I don't think that Vegeta has a purpose in, you know, using Super 
Super Saiyan God now, because the end result would have been the same if you were to fight Topo and Jiren. Maybe the other fodder characters, it, it may have actually made a difference, and I think that if Vegeta did have Super Saiyan God, it would have made and been that definitive difference for him as a character, but I don't really think it's needed since Goku already has all these forms, but it would have been really cool to see, and I, I'm willing to bet that in the manga, they're going to add in Super Saiyan God, Vegeta versus a plethora of different characters. So that's what I'm really excited to see. And to answer your second question, between Gohan and Topo, now I am willing to bet that at some given point, there is going to be a definitive conclusion between both Topo and Gohan. And of course, one of the reasons why I say this is because according to the recent spoiler video that I made, it looks like 17 is going to sacrifice himself in using his body to paralyze Topo and further causing his elimination. But in my video, I did make a correction in saying that Gohan is very hesitant on eliminating Topo because 17 is attached to him. So that's the only reason why Gohan is, you know, preserving himself and not throwing Topo out because they need 17. 17 unquestionably has been one of the biggest MVPs in this tournament. He's done everything to help and save Universe 7 from disaster against Ani Raza, against various other fighters like Daemon. So 17 has served his purpose, but looking at it from an objective point of view, Gohan still needs 17. And I think that by the end of this, Gohan, at least for me, I would like to see Gohan eliminate Topo. But I think that Gohan is probably going to come to the point where, yes, between the two, I can see Gohan ringing out Topo. I can see Topo making a comeback, unleashing more of his power, decimating some of the fighters. But I think once Gohan is backed into a corner, that's when we're going to get to see Gohan in all of his glory, unleash his true potential on Topo, and hopefully enough from there, ringing him out. Now, again, I stand corrected. It's because of 17 that Gohan is very hesitant on throwing him out. Now, is that a bad thing? Yes, because, you know, to a degree, you need to ring out one of the top god tier fighters to assure your own survival, but Gohan's not seeing it that way because he still needs 17. So by the very end, I think between Gohan and Topo, I can see Topo being rung out, but the person that's gonna eliminate Gohan, I think, might be Jiren. Unless scenario number two comes about and where, you know, we get a double elimination between Topo and Gohan, which again would be very interesting because instead of giving one character more shine over the other, they actually might give him a double elimination. So I really wouldn't mind that, but I definitely think that if Gohan doesn't throw himself out with Topo, or if Gohan doesn't throw Topo out clean, then Gohan's gonna get rung out by Jiren. It'll, it only makes sense to me. But between the two, I'm gonna have to say Topo goes. Now, to answer your third question, Vegeta losing to Jiren, but still being in the ring. I think a lot of people are misunderstanding Vegeta's purpose. Now, even though Vegeta is giving everything he has and then some to fight Jiren and still isn't able to get the job done, that does not mean that Vegeta is weak. It doesn't mean that Vegeta is useless. Vegeta is doing more, arguably, than how Hit did when he fought Jiren. So you got to give Vegeta respect. I love Vegeta as a character because he's he's being established in this tournament. He's given he's being given the Kid Buu treatment. Now, despite whatever happens to him, he's still going to make that comeback, which is why I love and respect the character so much because despite him getting a massive beatdown by Jiren, which is inevitable, he's still going to hang on and fight back, which I think is very important here. Now, I do think that Vegeta is going to be used for plot as a plot device for Goku and getting UI at some given point. I just think that a lot of people are kind of giving Vegeta a lot of crap because we see him in episode 122. He's going all in. He's going ham. He's, you know, dishing out all these shots, final flash, and it turns out that nothing actually worked and people are crapping on him for that, but they fail to remember that this dude, Vegeta, just, just because something doesn't work the first time, he's still going to continue in pushing forward. So that's where the respect factor comes in. So is he being saved? I think so. The only question is like, when? When is he being saved and, and, and for what purpose, you know? I think that at some given point, Vegeta is going to inflict massive damage in putting a dent in Universe 11 before getting tossed out, which is going to leave, you know, room for Goku to jump in as a UI and just fighting off whoever's left. Um, but I think that it's unquestionable that by the end of this, Vegeta's gonna leave his mark, and even if he does get wrung out, he's still gonna make it known that, okay, I did damage, this is your opportunity to capitalize and win. Now, to answer your final question, Golden Frieza. Honestly, if Frieza went into his golden form, it should be a KO, it should be slaughter. I mean, Vegeta, you know, fighting Jiren is one thing, but Frieza fighting Dispo, I think that Golden Frieza should be enough to decimate Dispo, but it looks like according to the spoilers, in which I, I made a few videos on, it looks like Gohan jumps in to help him, which I don't really have a problem with, but it's like you're begging the question, where do we go from here with Frieza? It's like, why is he struggling? In his final form, I can understand, but hopefully this doesn't lead into him using his golden powers to fight off Dispo and lose still, because it wouldn't make any sense to me. So 
I think that Frieza is going to go golden between episode 124 and 125. And once he does that, I think it's game over for Dispo. And I do want to say, Lauren, thank you so much for your recommendation on my vlogging channel. Again, if you guys are new to that or are, are essentially unaware of that, I will leave a link down below to my vlogging channel. I will be covering lots of stuff on there, behind the scenes stuff that you guys will not get to find on here. So make sure you guys check that out. Lauren, thank you so much for your questions. I hope you have a wonderful new year and I'll see you down in the comment section below. And now moving on to the next question, which is from Ange Rainbow Six Siege and more Q&A. Hey, Alex, I'm a big fan of your channel and especially your theories and Xenoverse battles. Thank you, man. I uh, hope you will become the number one DB YouTuber because you deserve that. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Here is my only question. Question one, would you rather have seen some episodes of the tournament where, for example, Universe 7 wasn't in the spotlight, like, for example, Universe 2, 6, 11? Love you, bro. Love you. Thank you so much for that, Ange. I really do appreciate that. Um, and, and for the warm comments as well. Now, this has been the biggest problem in the tournament, I think, is the fact that Universe 7 kept getting shine. Nobody else really got any shine. I mean, how many other people would have loved to see Universe 4 versus Universe 9? Universe 6 versus Universe 11? Universe, I don't know, 3 versus Universe 6? Like, stuff like that. Everything that happened in the tournament involved Universe 7 in some way, shape, or form. And I get that because they're telling the story from their point of view primarily, which is understandable. However, I would have loved to see different perspectives of different fights happening. We got that only briefly in the beginning of the tournament. And then after that, it was mainly Goku, 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 Goku. Oh yeah, and by the way, Goku. So it's like, okay, I, I get that. It's the Goku show, but Jesus, what about Hit? What about Jiren? What about Topo? What about Dispo? What about, you know, having other fighters do something here? So even though we got momentary fights with Roshi and Ganos and Frost and Vegeta, in some way, shape, or form, it still wasn't enough. I would have loved to see what would have happened if, like, for example, Hit came across Topo, or, for example, Frieza came across, I don't know, Hit, or something like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, even, like, don't feature certain characters so much. I would have loved to see more from Frieza, etc., like that, but I think that, yes, uh, in the manga, we're definitely gonna see something different, and I think that that's, that that's what's gonna make everything so unique, is the fact that in the manga, we're bound to see different fights, or at least the same fights with different outcomes, and I think that Universe 7 may not be shown as much in the manga, because we might see more from, like, other universes, you know, having to partake in, in this giant fight, um, but I just think that, yes, I agree, I would have loved to see more episodes focusing on other universes, but thank God we got rid of Universe 2, because that was, that universe was complete trash, so was Universe 4. I think those two universes were garbage. Universe 3 was so cool because they had Anilaza, and Anilaza was amazing. He pushed back five, you know, you know, god-tier fighters by himself with one blast. It was it was incredible. So I just think that going forward, you know, it is what it is. I mean, it's down to, you know, Universe 7 and 11. It, it's just, it, it's only a matter of time of, of them showing us different perspectives of, of different fights. Like, for example, Frieza versus Dispo, Gohan versus Topo. It's it's interesting because now we're, we're in the in the final nine minutes, so it's 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 all gonna boil from there. But I I would have loved to see something different, and you can you can rest assured that in the manga they're gonna have different variations of different fights happening. So, anyways, my friend, thank you so much for your questions. I hope you have a wonderful new year, and I'll see you down in the comment section below, my friend. And now moving on to the next question, which is from the Spookster. Hey, Alex, like the content. Thank you so much. Question number one, how do you think the universe survival arc will end? Question two, what arc do you think might come next? Thank you so much for your questions, bro. To answer your first question, I don't know. I don't know because this is becoming very predictable. Now, it's very ignorant for someone to say, oh, yeah, you know, Goku's going to win. It's, it's for plot. What if he doesn't win? That's the that's the question that's on everyone's mind. What if he doesn't win? What if it's somebody else? I made three separate videos breaking down, dissecting, and analyzing the possible winners of the tournament. Those having to be Frieza, Jiren, and Goku. You guys can go ahead and watch this on my channel. Those are the only three that I think are logical enough right now to win. I don't see Topo winning. I definitely don't see Dispo winning. I don't see Vegeta winning just because right now he really isn't being established as that guy who can win. And I'm fairly certain that, yeah, sure, I mean, he does have the capabilities to win, but he's going up against Jiren and everything he's thrown at him, nothing seems to have worked. So, you know, for that, I don't see him winning. 17, same thing, Gohan. So it's only logical to see Goku, Jiren, or Frieza win. Um, and I think that the way this might end, I can definitely see Universe 7 being erased and then coming back because maybe the wish is to really restore everything all like all the other universes or whatever with the exception of maybe goku who knows man if goku wins 
which is, you know, fairly obvious that it might happen, it's going to become way too predictable. And I don't know how many people want that, you know, for the show because they're going to say, oh, well, it's too predictable. We saw this coming ever since the beginning. This was one of the most predictable stories ever. So that's only if that happened. If Jiren wins, it'll be a bit unpredictable to that degree. Same thing with Frieza. But the way I see this ending, this is going to come down to seconds. Mark my words, this tournament is going to boil down in, in, in legit seconds. I can see the Dai Shinkan saying 60 seconds remaining, 30 seconds remaining, 10 seconds remaining, 5 seconds remaining. I can definitely see it coming down to that and then like the final blow happens. Now, it could also result in some sort of double elimination. I mean, I really, I, I would really like to see that in a way because it'll really establish and protect both characters that having to be Goku, Jiren, especially if they're the last two remaining, I would love to see them in there and just square it off to where there isn't a winner. Like the tournament is empty, like the stage is empty. That could be something different. So, you know, to that extent, I, I, I think that's the way it might end. But judging based on the way it's looking like, it's just becoming super unpredictable. So to answer your final question, what arc do I think is next? Well, we have the new movie coming out in December, which I don't think is going to be canon to the show, but I can definitely see the next arc involving Oob, involving, you know, possibly the ending of Z. And I'm not saying that we're, we're going to definitely end off the series. Um, I just firmly believe that at some given point, we're going to reach the end. And I think this would be the perfect time for us to dive into the end of the story and then seeing what happens there. Not everyone's going to agree with that. Some people are going to say, oh, well, we want to see this. We want to see that. You know, it, it all very, it all really literally varies um, to see, you know, the direction and, and, and how they want to take this. But the, the next arc, I, I, I want to see Ubi involved. I want to see something to where... It's the Budokai tournament, you know, they're gonna have the tournament, Oob's there, Goku's there, whatever. They, you know, resume that, and, you know, we, we, we pick up with, Go with Goku and Oob having to go off and train, and instead of having the, the Dragon Ball GT opening, we have Goku and Oob maybe training with Beerus or something like that, or maybe Whis. That'd be, that'd be really exceptional to see, but I think that the, the series isn't going to end after the next arc, but it really wouldn't surprise me, because you have to ask yourself, like, at this given point, where do we go in the show? Like, everything's been done. What do we do next, you know? And by the end of it, I, I it's really hard to say, but I, I definitely have high hopes in seeing something, you know, magical happen because with this tournament having to, uh, you know, take place right now, it, you've seen lots of crazy stuff happen. So uh, for me, I would hope to see something different, but I definitely think it's going to involve Oob. So either way, bro, thank you so much for your questions and I hope you have a wonderful New Year's. And once again, everybody, I do want to say thank you all so very much for watching this edition of Dragon Ball Q&A. We're going to have one more episode of Dragon Ball Q&A for the year. I would have to say roughly around Saturday or Sunday, but we're definitely going to have one more Dragon Ball Q&A video. And I also do want to say thank you all so very much for supporting the channel. I will be doing more Q&As in 2018 as we did in 2016, 2017. And I'm going to start taking more questions from Twitter and even my Facebook. So make sure you guys are following me at Twitter because I am going to do a segment in the future Q&A videos involving Twitter and YouTube comments. So if you guys want to be featured, drop your questions for the next Dragon Ball Q&A video down in the comments and over on Twitter. So make sure you guys are following me at Twitter and post your comments or your questions in one of the threads I'm going to be posting for the next Q&A video. I wanted to wish you guys a very happy New Year's. I will be doing a New Year's vlog on the channel. You guys have been spectacular. This has been such a great year. The ups, the downs, we've had a wonderful time. And 2018, I promise you, is going to be a much bigger and better year for the channel. So thank you all so much for watching, guys. Once again, tune back in for more. And I'll see you guys down in the comment section below. Have a great day, everybody. Peace.